Runway Gen 4.5 or Kling 2.6? Which of these two platforms makes the stronger case in the text to video arena? Let's find out. Same input, different results, and some surprising differences along the way. Everywhere I turn, I get hit with the big claims. Runway calls their new video model Gen 4.5, the world's top-rated video model with unprecedented physical accuracy and visual precision. Terms like precise prompt adherence, stylistic control, and visual consistency are proudly highlighted. Kling, on the other hand, throws around phrases like world's first unified multimodal video model and first step into the audiovisual era. If you took the marketing at face value, you'd think we're witnessing two giants clashing. The first thing that becomes clear while working on this video is that Runway Gen 4.5 is currently only available as a text to video tool. Their so-called frontier video generation model still feels a bit like it's running with the handbrake on. And that's not just a figure of speech. In my case, over 95% of all AI generated clips come from image to video, with the rest based on video to video. But because I really want to see what Runway is capable of right now, I've been following the platform for months. I'm fine with sticking to text prompts for this test. To keep things fair, I've also limited all results on Kling 2.6 to pure text to video outputs. I don't see that limitation as a problem. Instead, I take it as a reason to sharpen my prompting skills. Runway Gen 4.5 offers some solid tips in its help desk, including timestamp prompting and camera term examples. Definitely worth a look. The prompts I used for this test, by the way, are listed in the comments. If the video helps, feel free to drop a like or subscribe. Thanks. Since many of you already know how to work with text to video tools, I'm skipping the basics this time. Instead, we'll dive straight into a focused comparison and I'm switching things up. I'll show you the results first without telling you which platform made what. Ready for a bit of detective work? Let's go. The theme is simple. Which one is better? Take a guess and see if your instinct lines up. If you manage to match all eight examples correctly, honestly, respect. My own thoughts come at the end of the video. Example one, the reactive narrative challenge. A quiet Western moment gets shattered by a crashing combine harvester. The model has to handle the physical destruction of the barn while letting the cowboy react naturally. No glitches, no weird resets, just solid human timing. Your guess, which platform do you think pulled this one off? Let's take a look. Example two, the volumetric interaction challenge. Here, the fog isn't just an overlay. It needs to behave like volume. A leaf blower pushes the mist aside, revealing what's behind. The AI has to simulate realistic air and fog dynamics. So which system got it right? Here comes the answer. Example three, the fluid dynamics challenge. A canoe rushes through white water, waves slamming against the hull. The camera pans steadily and the AI needs to calculate water resistance while keeping the canoe properly tracked. What's your pick for this one? Let's find out who nailed it. Example four, the atmospheric texture challenge. A pirate stands in falling snow. Here the challenge is all about mood and material, soaked fabrics, soft contrast, and that gritty documentary feel. Which engine created this atmosphere? Here's the reveal. Example five, the sequential physics challenge. A tennis player serves, the ball hits a box, the box falls. No shortcuts, just a clean physical chain of events playing out in the right order. Any idea which platform managed this sequence? Let's check. Example six, the lighting transition challenge. A fox moves from a cold forest into a warm den. The AI must handle the lighting shift gradually from blue cold to orange warmth, all in one continuous shot. Which model handled the color and timing? Let's see the result. Example seven, the high velocity impact challenge. A spaceship crashes into the sea and shoots back out. The AI needs to merge hard surface modeling with believable splash physics and upward momentum. Can you tell which system pulled it off? Here comes the clip. Example eight, 
the dynamic illumination challenge. A runner moves through a dark warehouse. Lamps above him switch on and off in perfect sync with his position. Exposure and timing have to be spot on. Last one, who got the rhythm right? Both video AI platforms struggled with this one. Here's your answer. Now the verdict. First, let me touch on something I keep seeing in the comments. Now and then, I pick up on a familiar tone. This doesn't really work. And honestly, I get it. When things fail, it's not just time that gets wasted, it's money too. And that frustration is real. But here's the thing. Most of the time, it's not the first attempt that nails it. Even though the marketing around video AI might suggest otherwise. No, it's not just click, render, perfect result. Far from it. The key factor is the prompt, and there are plenty of ways to get it slightly wrong. To really understand how a model behaves, start with the prompting guidelines. For Runway Gen 4.5, that means asking who, what, when, where, how. Build your prompt around that logic. Simple as that. One last thought on Runway's claim that Gen 4.5 is the world's top-rated video model. I won't deny that Runway can deliver impressive results, but let's not forget the price. When you compare it to Kling 2.6, especially using Kling's native platform, you end up paying less than a tenth for a five second clip. And in many cases, the output looks just as good or even better. And when it comes to handling physical logic, Kling doesn't fall short either. A quick detour into the platforms themselves, if you're curious how the actual text to video process works, follow me through it. Let's start with Runway Gen 4.5. Head to runwayml.com. In the top right corner, click Try Runway. Then on the left sidebar, select the little tool icon. In the next column, make sure video is selected right at the top. Scroll all the way down and switch the model to Gen 4.5. That's where you want to be. At the top, you'll see the prompt bar. Right above it, there's a link to the official prompting guide. Below that are a few image examples. Click on them and the underlying prompts will auto fill into the bar. It's a nice way to get a feel for how prompts are structured. Bottom right, you'll find the basic settings, aspect ratio, duration, and a few other tweaks. Once your prompt is in, just hit generate. Your result shows up on the right with further options. It's definitely worth trying the upscaler. At 10 credits, it's a pretty fair deal. Now over to Kling. If you want to use the Video AI Model 2.6, click Experience now at the top of the home page. That takes you to the actual start screen. On the left, select Video, or just click Video Generation in the center. Either way, you'll land directly in the interface. Kling 2.6 currently supports both image to video and text to video. For this test series, we're going with text to video only. Kling also has a solid prompt guide, especially if you're curious about the native audio feature. If you don't want to use it, it costs extra credits. Just toggle the green switch. Paste your prompt at the top. At the bottom, pick between the professional and standard model. Select five or 10 seconds for duration. Choose your aspect ratio and set how many outputs you want the cost is shown clearly and transparently. That part, honestly, is really well done. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel, AI, now you know.